today we got to talk about these Spotify features. We can go a super deep dive, a full episode one day, just talk about these Spotify features. So, but we want to talk about some key features that got everybody talking. Yep. yep. Because the platform is changing. And if we want to get straight to the point, we can just start with Ja'Cory saying, I told you so. You want to go there? Yeah, man, I love a good I told you so. Right, let's let's, let's I, get right I, into I live it. live for a good I told you so. All right. So, man. one of the biggest, I don't want to say the biggest, but one of the more prolific feature mm-hmm. updates is the announcement of Spotify's clips feature. That mm-hmm. is what they're calling it, right? So, yep. essentially what they're going to allow artists to do is to upload short form videos, 30 second videos to their profile to like add more context to a song or an album or, you know, just to kind of show your personality a little bit. Now, you, know, you might be thinking, oh, that's cool. But where's the I told you so come in, mm-hmm. you know? And we've been telling you guys for months that short form content is the new language. And, you know, like most good languages, it starts to spread. And you realize you travel to places and you still got to speak the same language. You know what I'm saying? Once you hit these foreign soils, you know what I'm saying? And so now Spotify has adopted the language of short form content, which to me says that more than likely at some point the others are going to do it too. You know, maybe their own versions, but at the very least, one of the biggest ones is doing it, which is enough. You know what I'm saying? So now your short form content skills doesn't just apply to TikTok. It doesn't just apply to YouTube. doesn't just apply to social media, which artists like to be. I'm not a social media guy. Well, I got to do these social media things. Right. It's like, well, now you see why. Because the streaming platforms are adopting social media platform methods. And it's probably going to work the same way. You know? Preach, Pastor. Preach. Mm. So, yeah, we told y'all, man. You know? So what you're saying is TikTok is Great Britain. Okay. <laughs> and and there's some imperialist. Okay. Who just invaded the rest of the world. <laughs> and now everybody's speaking English. Yeah. That's that's what it is. And we all eating, you know, beans and toast. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the drinking gray tea, bro, like, you know. <laughs> I don't even want to go too far in that direction. <laughs> but everybody is speaking TikTok now. Yep. Everybody is speaking TikTok. They've invaded. They've imperialized, if that's a word. It is a word because I said it. Uh, you know, I I got to think about like what's a word and what's not a word. It's like, hey, bro, I used to tell my mom, if this Shakespeare guy can create words that we now talk about, how come I can't create words? Yeah, Webster just throw some shit out there here, man. I'm like, I just got to believe him. You know, hey, well, Webster was a, basically like a, a content creator, you know what I'm saying? He just, oh, let me organize these <laughs> thoughts and give you the thoughts. So you got to kind of give Webster some credit. But <laughs> with that feature, like, I think people, our artists are underestimating why it's going to be so valuable. But also I think people are underestimating how this is going to affect TikTok in the long, no, Spotify in the long term. Yeah. Yeah. So number one, the value is, okay, I'm showing my personality on the platform where the music is. We think, oh, the friction is low to go over from TikTok to Spotify in comparison to what we've seen before. Well, you're already on Spotify now. All right, so the same way we, you can be popping on TikTok and then your sound will get traction, well, your song will get traction on Spotify at some point. So you have that. Two, with that being said, do I want to say that? I'm going to say that one third. Two, now it's going to be up to you to be able to be creative, to still have high quality content, Yeah. right? Yeah. That doesn't feel like it's messing up Spotify's platform because Spotify is a little different. I don't think they're going to be as tolerant about the experimentation that took place on TikTok to start to allow things to bubble to the top of what's good and what's not. That's going to be interesting. So you're probably going to have to make sure that your your content is on of a certain quality without the leeway that you had on TikTok. Because that otherwise will just take over and make it way too social. Yeah. Right. But third, I think at some point, if this is successful, we might find Spotify ads become a real thing again. Like the regular audio ads? Not the audio ad. It's going to be a new type of ad. Okay. The same way that we can advertise in the Instagram feed, yeah. the TikTok feed, the stories. That's going to become a thing on yeah. Spotify. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because this is setting the stage. If this is successful, that will allow them to actually compete with ads in a way they haven't been able to compete. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That's true. 
let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. The thing about it that was the most, or what I like the most about it is that this is the first time that Spotify is giving artists a feature that allows them to communicate with their audience on Spotify. Yep. Right. And so that's been a huge, um, that's been a huge factor for a lot of people just not fucking with Spotify. It's like, man, I got a million monthly listeners. I can't say nothing to none of them. I don't have the data to retarget. And, but now you can, I guess it's like you said, I almost use Spotify as a, like any other platform. Hey, let me use Spotify to push my million monthly listeners over to Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Or just, just to say, hey, in platform and let them know, you know, I'm, I'm kind of here. Because yep. I'm curious to see, to your point about the quality control, what the parameters are going to look like. Because I remember when they did the Spotify rap, right, and they let artists upload the 30 second video to go into their route, which was them testing it out. Yep. I remember they had like certain things you couldn't talk about or say, and so like you couldn't be trying to push people off platform. You couldn't put like logos and links, you know what I'm saying, like icons in your video. So it had to be like very like clean, almost like, hey man, like, you know, this is the box of what you can talk about in this video, right? So I'm assuming they're gonna implement like those same types of guidelines on here, at least for this early stage, right? Cause like you said, I don't think they wanted to be as like, loose of a canon as TikTok is. I don't think I don't think Spotify is ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, and then most artists wouldn't even put the output out to do it, right? So it would, it would get dominated very quickly by the artists that are, are like that. You know, like the the Nick D's and the ISO Kenny's of the world. You know what I'm saying? Would move right. very, really quickly and just take that shit over. So yeah, because then the labels will start your plan because their artists aren't doing it. Yeah, too big. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So yep. so I think they're gonna. They're, my guess is they're gonna work to find that balance, but. I mean, I personally like it, man. Like I said, bro, artists, you can finally talk to your audience. You can show your personality on it. Uh, I was reading on the features early and just seeing some of the plans they have for it in terms of it, like, you know, popping up at the top of people's, like, search bars and, and, and being fed into the algorithm like the music is. So it's, it's going to, you know, be a, I'm assuming, like, a good discovery tool. Yep. Probably secondary and then be a good, like, fan engagement tool, like, primary. You know what I'm saying? Like, here's a way for you to just kind of, like, talk to people it's like the more advanced version that that note that you can put on your song on spotify you know what i'm talking about oh yeah. yeah to me it's like a more advanced version of that you know what i'm saying because i don't know i don't know man i would love to know if those notes actually work i have feel like i haven't seen artists using them in a while you know what i'm saying but um to me it's just a bit a better version of that well i think this will actually help things like that become more impactful yeah because the thing is you had this note which by itself, it seems cool because like even the artist pick, it seems cool. But if my fan experience on this platform is truly never to receive any communication from the artist, I don't ever register. Yeah, you ain't thinking about it. Yeah, I'm not thinking about it. I'm just not looking for it because I don't expect to hear from them. So I'm not even looking, even if it says artist pick, I'm not even thinking truly if they pick that, oh, this person really liked this song, right? Versus if you posted that and said, this is my, song for you on Instagram or TikTok, then I would feel like, oh, this artist really believes that this is a song that I should be listening to, right? Yeah. Or they want me to. So creating other forms of engagement where on the platform, people feel like the artist is communicating this to me is going to help them pay more attention to other features that probably didn't really make the impact that she would have thought. Yeah, right. that's true. So it's like, now you could build like a true funnel around it. Like you could have little text. Yeah. Pushing people to the artist pick, pushing them to a playlist to that has your short your clip in it. Like you could build a real like your like fan has been falling on there. And now, you know, it it was a, a you know, not to get ahead, but like there was one of the new updates that kinda emphasized like Spotify has like the whole like merch thing on it on in there, right? And like I've been seeing like merch become a lot more like prominent on uh, artist profiles over the last like couple of months. So I mean now that they announced it, I I I get why, but I see that they're making the steps to make Spotify more of a fan engagement platform, which is like I said, been one of the biggest complaints of it for 
since as long as it's been around. You know what's crazy? People, I've seen all these apps. Mm. People reach out to me for my opinion to build or um, or wanted my, me to be like a marketer for these apps where they have a platform and people can stream your music on the platform. People can buy your merch on the platform. You have a feed where people can comment on the platform. People have been pushing these ideas for years now. And it's the easiest for Spotify to just become this platform. Like Spotify could and should be everything that an artist needs. You have everybody here. All right. If you made it easier and better for merch to be purchased and tickets to be purchased, where it was a true viable option and people could truly um, like communicate with their fans through that and process, like you might could take control of the process and whatever in some form or fashion, like, that's great for you revenue wise. Yeah. You literally can become my house, right? Where everything lives out of. They're in the best position to do that. Now there might be implications on other sides of the business why they don't want to do that. Or I don't know, maybe the labels have been pushing them away from it, but they have been best positioned to be the the place where people go and have a 360, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No pun intended, with artists and be a part of every part of the business yeah. in a way. Yeah, and that, that's what I like about this this feature uh, rollout or the feature rollouts is that it feels like Spotify is finally embracing its position as a marketing tool. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Um, Cause I mean, we talk about a lot, right? Where, you know, artists have their, their, their complaints, you know, um, a lot valid about the platform in terms of like payouts and things like that. I've always kind of just looked at Spotify as just another marketing tool, right? If we can use this to build an audience up and, you know, hardest part like i was saying earlier was always like figuring out a way to push them off spotify to other stuff because we couldn't you can't talk to them directly so now they fix a lot of that right like now they have things like the clips they even have another feature um it's called something called like fan first so and they try to like identify like your biggest fans and then make sure they get like email updates and things around you pretty consistently right and i've been seeing it a little bit with some artists like i follow yeah so it's like they're finally embracing it as like a full like marketing site hey we have organic for you which is the algorithmic playlist we have pay for you which is marquee and, and discovery ads we have um you know, i guess organic too could be like content and we have a something for you to follow that too because you can sell tickets and merch on your platform yeah it's gonna take time for the, all that to develop in a way that yeah. is really significant but them not having these things pretty much continues to clarify that they have never been in the business of selling the artists all right if anything, they've been selling fans and consumers because they were looking at themselves more as a radio, mm -hmm. all right? And the radio value, it comes from the people who are listening to it, the amount of people who are listening to it, and then it becomes a conduit for other people to market themselves on, which it makes sense to start out that way. Mm -hmm. I can't even fault them on that. But now to me, in terms of revenue and possibilities, they have the position to be a platform for artists, yeah. right? You're at the threshold where everybody goes to, y'all are already number one. So if you can be a place where I ain't, and well, rightfully so, then get cuts um, of other parts of the business because you're allowing me to sell more merch directly, just to better um, understand where my fans are coming from and somehow optimize which of those fans see tickets for these shows and mm -hmm. things like that. Then like, why would I go to another platform? It's, it, it's hard for anybody to even build anything comparable to that because it's, it's really difficult to get to that point. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully this is a right another step in the right direction. But switching to another feature is the DJ AI. All right. So how do, how would you explain the DJ AI like in short? I mean, it's, to me, it sounds like AI shuffle. You know what I'm saying? Like I still don't completely understand it yet because my spotify hasn't updated so i have it mine hasn't either yeah but so ej shout out to ej the editor who y'all want to know who oh yeah who who kills y'all with the with the headline <laughs> yeah that's headline shawty out there the headline goat but personalization at, at the heart of what we do at spotify this is their quote on the new ai dj just think of fan favorite playlist like Discover Weekly or our annual Wrapped campaign. The beauty of these experiences is our ability to deliver the right piece of music for the exact moment in time 
and maybe even connect you with the next your next favorite artist in the process. We're building on that innovation by harnessing the power of AI in an entirely new way. And today we're excited to share that we're taking our personalization to a whole new level with DJ. So what's this all saying? All right, we're going to, to me, it's a glorified radio station. And I mentioned EJ because he said his girlfriend uses it a lot. So I think it's, to me, that's a proven case, a real world case where we might often say, all right, that sounds cool, but are people going to really use it? Well, there's already some people who are using it seriously mm-hmm. and allowing it to select the music and and control their discovery process, right? Yeah. So, and I, and I think Gary V alluded to this years ago when he was like, he was a little bullish on voice. It really hasn't taken over to the extent he thought yet, but he was saying when people are no longer searching the search engine and I'm going to Google to search it and I see like 10 options on a page, you think that's a little bit, well, what what do you think is going to happen where people just say, hey, Siri, do X, Y, and Z, or hey, Alexa, do X, Y, and Z. And then they just give them an option. All right. It's like, oh, when I, when we were in that other office the other week and I was like, hey, Alexa, play some little baby. I didn't control whether it went to Amazon or Spotify. All right. It could have just played another. I forgot what I said the uh, the other week. I think I said play like jazz or something. And it didn't tell. I didn't decide which jazz artist it played. Yeah. Right. So it's like, how do you create visibility in a world where you're not even competing with eyeballs anymore? You just, I don't know. Do we just say you're competing with ears? But like people can't see you. Unless they happen to hear you yeah. because the the platform is choosing for you. So I think that's something that sounds cool for consumers. I don't quite see. Like if it seems like it's a little troubling for artists, like it makes things even more competitive to be at the top. Yeah, I mean, I think if it works the way they're marketing it, because they're a big thing for it, like this is almost like Discover Weekly, but a little bit more personalized to yeah. young based on your old music taste, mm-hmm. which now, as I said it out loud, it's like, but isn't that the appeal of Discover Weekly is that we're learning your music taste and recommending you new things, right? So I, my my only thinking behind this is is pretty much what you said, man. I think Spotify is saying that users don't want to have as much control over the, the, their discovery process as they did when Spotify, because that was Spotify's big thing in the beginning, right? Like you have complete control over your discovery process, you know, um, and they failed at it. They did. Terrible. Like, yeah. they, they weren't great discovery engine. Yeah. Better playlisters. Like TikTok killed the discovery game. Yeah. Yeah. Man, man. Well, I, I will give Spotify on that. They're, they're better than the other DSPs at discovery. Like Apple's discovery engine is basically yeah. moot titles. <sighs> I only. Pandora might be the closest. Like Pandora is probably was the yeah. best to me, yeah. to be honest. Where Pandora is the best at like staying in one vibe. Yeah, for sure. And SoundCloud. SoundCloud's probably the SoundCloud, I guess if you consider that a DSP, yeah. Uh, that Discovery, they probably at their height did Discovery better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was just more of a cultural thing. I don't even think it was all technological. It was just yeah. it was just the setup of it. Yeah. But I mean, and then there, I don't even look at Pandora as a DSP to be honest. I think of it just differently as like radio and they do that the best. Yeah. So and and honestly, in a DSP game, I just don't think Amazon and Apple count almost. Like, <laughs> they don't care to count. Right, they don't care to count. Now, it's not that they aren't viable sources to get like plenty of streams and audience, of course, all that, but yeah. The discovery? You know. Yeah, like they're <laughs> they're not in that same game that Spotify has, has done. So that's why I say, all right, TikTok killed them in that. They're trying to get back to it. And I think what they realized also is the listenership is such a passive experience with the app all right you go in you play your music you're not you can be using spotify for three hours and never look at the shit yeah you know what i'm saying yeah whereas and that's tough for advertising yeah which probably is part of another reason that they would like to have more advertising dollars let's get people looking at the app let's do these clips so people can actually look at the app because <laughs> ain't nobody really looking at spotify yeah. like that yeah you know what i mean so when you can capture more eyeballs in that way, I think it's, it's probably going to be a benefit to them as a company, but then it'll be a benefit to the artists in its own way um, that figure it out because 
now I can engage with, with you in more ways and cons- you know consume you as a visual and audio experience. But still, the DJ aspect of it, again, I just don't think I I don't trust I don't trust them to be great at it from a artist music executive standpoint. What I, I trust them to be great at it for a happy consumer standpoint, right? But like for me to be a, a new artist and trying to get my stuff seen outside of using this other feature, which we'll get to, yeah. like, yeah, you know, I, you, you, there's only a, a limited amount of shelf space. Yeah. I know, although we, so, and that's that's the the weird thing about this. So we acknowledge the advent of the internet created this unlimited shelf space, right? Mm-hmm. Before you go to the store, hey, there's only enough space, like a certain amount of space that you can put your CDs on. There's only enough space for that you can put your Coca-Cola and Pepsi and, and it's hard to bring a new product in there because literally physically there's only another a uh, certain amount of space. I get that the internet makes things better and Spotify, um, to that credit, has more space for more artists. But then realistically, shelf space is limited by time and people's attention in a given amount of time. Yeah. All right. So yes, I can have unlimited amount of artists on this platform, but can I truly equally distribute this music through this AI DJ in a way that's even what's the even incentive to be even and fair to quote, quote unquote fair to everybody. Yeah. It, ain't, it doesn't even make sense. Right. So you're still going to have some level of prioritization towards the people that it makes the most sense. You know what I mean? You know, those are the labels and distributors and the indies, but not so indies. Then you get down to the pure indies. So that's one, like, I don't really trust it to be a huge benefit for artists unless they happen to get in. Then the other side, maybe one incentive would be this feature, the Spotify discovery yeah. feature. Well, I could, but even just really quick on the DJ thing, I, I just kind of thought about it. I think the DJ feature is maybe meant to control the vibe around the discovery. Because like I said, like, what I was thinking was like, okay, it doesn't make sense that they feel like they would need the DJ tool to introduce artists to people because they have uh, they have Discover Weekly, right? Discover Weekly is essentially the out- like an optimized way of doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because, yeah, exactly. Like Discover Weekly is kind of like, Hey, we're looking at like your broader music taste, I guess, and recommending you so versus the DJ feature sounds like, hey, we're recommending you songs based on like the mood you seem to be in right now. You know what I'm saying? So like we can't versus like Discover Weekly doesn't necessarily have like there's not like a theme like vibe to your discovery, just like a bunch of new music I think you would like, versus like this is gonna be like, hey, you are listening to, you know, Lil Baby and Lil Dirk right now. And clearly you in the mood for some lit music. So I'm gonna start recommending you other artists that make this type of music, right? So it's a little bit more, I guess, cohesive in your know, musical move for the moment. That's I just thought about that. Like that's the only thing I could think of, of like why or how that could maybe be beneficial to artists. Like it's gonna make the experience in which they get discovered in a little bit more positive, you know. But then that yeah, less yeah. random. Yeah, so, but it's like I, I don't know how impactful that's gonna be. So maybe it maybe. might take away some of those skips. Yeah, it's like when you finish your playlist and go to some no- other random thing and you skip it because it's like it's not your vibe, even yeah. though you would have liked it in a better experience. Yeah, exactly. To that, I say, well, this is some Apple shit. <laughs> you know, when they release a feature like five years later, it's an Android Ben had that shit. Like this is well, Pandora's been doing radio the right way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that much to this, but again, you equate that and relate that to the discovery engine mm-hmm. what is it what is discovery this? mode yeah discovery mode that's what i meant to say yeah that's the real kicker that's the real kicker so breaking down the discovery mode what's the percentage again i think it's 30 percent. they take 20 or 30 they take 20 or 30 30 percent uh cut mm-hmm. from your track and then you get incentivized placement on the platform mm-hmm. through the algorithm through the algorithm how powerful would that have been without having this radio, this DJ AI? I think that's part of why them being they're being launched at the same time. Oh, uh, because they can they can disguise it through that shit. I think about that. That's a good point. Yeah, I think about that. Yeah. yeah. So 
And that's only the that's the better way to probably even introduce it. Otherwise, would you just hop on some playlist? Yeah, my dad basically just keep throwing me like Discover Weekly in the radio. Yeah. Well, in the the regular radio. So I'm, yeah, yeah. I wonder if the DJ thing is gonna replace the the regular radio yeah, thing. Would have to. Yeah, radio radio. As I like to repeat, is trash. <laughs> 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 so it has to be a better way of doing it. Like they they themselves they call it a combination of Discover Weekly and um and Wrapped. That's, oh, okay. that's yeah. the, I, I just don't quite get the rap analogy personally yet. I guess it's maybe the personalized yeah. aspect of it, but that's how Spotify describes it. 